Welcome back to New Day. A young woman is turning debris and rubble in Gaza into brand new buildings. Mej Masharawi used her engineering degree to develop a strong brick using just ashes and other debris. And her Gaza-based company, Green Cake, is led by women. Mej is in Seattle for an event co-presented by Architecture for Refugees USA and Architects Without Borders. Welcome. So Thank glad you. you're here. Thanks for having me. Um, kind of set the scene in Gaza, first yeah. of all. So Gaza Strip is, um, it's part of Palestine. It's about 20 miles long and about five miles wide. It's the, the largest open air prison in the world. And it has about 2.1 million people. Um, over 70% of them are unemployed. And in this fairly tiny space. Yes, it's, it's really tough and it's really uh, compact. So you will feel that everything, Gaza is so small, you know, and you don't yeah. recognize it until you go outside. So Gaza has uh, two official borders for people to leave, one with Egypt and one with uh, Israel. And, and you can't leave, you just can't go and apply. You need to have uh, a lot of documents, permits, and you need someone to sponsor you. So how did you decide to study engineering? It's a good question. Um, I was looking for a place where can I find the practical experience and the knowledge. And I was very passionate about mathematics and chemistry and physics. So I, I just said, okay, maybe engineering is the place. So I, I started studying engineering. Also, it was an, an effect from my dad. So my dad is an engineer and a businessman. And I was like, I wanted to be like my dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> follow, follow in his footsteps. Yeah. So you have come up with this brick. Yeah. And if you haven't been to the area, you might not understand why that's yeah. such an important thing. Why was this needed? So in 2008, um, our house was partially destroyed. And in 2012 as well. And my Was it a bombing? What, what happened? So you can see a house from outside, but when you go inside, there is no tiles, no rooms, nothing. And in 2012, everything around our house was destroyed and also part of it. So it was... We, we thought that the army, the IDF, took it for a couple of days and because it was one of the highest houses. Mm, okay. and, and when I went back home, it really broke my heart because it's the house where I grew up and it was near to the border. And my parents that time decided to leave the area. So we left uh, our border uh, house to, s to another house in the middle of the city. And my parents had the ability to buy a new house or to build a new house. But other, other 170,000 people who lost their houses, they couldn't rebuild their houses. And I was like, okay, so if we, ha if we are 2% of the population who could move to a new house, what about the 98% of mm -hmm. the population who couldn't? And so I wanted to do something for those people. And not, not only just for them, I also wanted to do, you know, to create the access. So if you, you, if you have the access to rebuild your house, then you can. Then you can do it. Exactly. What, what is the problem with accessing uh, normally made construction materials? So we, we live in a blocked area since 2006. And part of the blockade is that we are we we cannot bring anything that's dual use. So um, the government in Gaza used the building material to uh, build uh, tunnels, and Israel said as long as you are using it for building tunnels, we are not then we are not allowing you. We to won't allow it in. Exactly. So you've invented this brick that takes the debris that yeah. you have from the damage and destruction of the homes yeah. of, that people have fled, and ash, something yeah. that you've got. How did you figure out how to do this and make a viable building material? It's a good question. So I started with bu making building blocks from paper because we have no waste management that time. And, and then I started, my dad already did some research, so I took his mm -hmm. research and I started making the building blocks and from paper and it was successful but not affordable. So I moved to make mud blocks and it was re it takes longer process to burn the mother blocks and i was like okay then instead of burning the mother blocks to dry it why not to use the ashes that come from the burning Which process you have yeah exactly and the rappel and let's make building blocks that's a cheaper uh, more affordable and also as strong as the regular blocks and you're only 25 years old, so you've accomplished this at this point, which is pretty amazing. There we see the bricks being used. Yeah. Um, so, so now what happens? Are these affordable for people? Are you manufacturing? Where does it stand? We do manufacture it, but the idea that we don't manufacture it on a daily basis because there is no high demand on it in Gaza. The past two years, Gaza's economy collapsed because the government in the West Bank decided not to pay salaries for the people in Gaza. And most of the people who are employed are employed for the government. So people don't have money to buy food. Uh, so how can they have money to buy right. blocks? To do these other things. Yeah. Um, you've also created an off-the-grid solar yeah. kit. Tell me a bit about that So and why it's needed. When I started Green Cake, I was about like 21. 
And after two years of working, we proved that women can do something in our community. And I was like, okay, now it's time to move to a second thing to solve another issue. So I came for, to the US and it was my first time to travel alone. And it, it shocked me. It was a life changing experience. Mm. So I joined a fellowship uh, in Boston to learn business for three months. And then before then, I didn't know. I was running a business, but I didn't know what does business mean. It's just a passion. And, and there I couldn't contact my family for weeks and weeks because they didn't have access to energy to connect internet and contact me. And it was very frustrating for me how easy life here could be if people have money and if they have work and back home just so hard to get the basics of life, which is electricity. Right. So I decided to do something and I was like, why not to bring solar energy to Gaza? And there are some solar companies in Gaza, but none of them is working for the household level. So we wanted to create affordable solar device that every family can afford paying for. So we started this company in 2017. We sourced our products in China and we, start, we wanted to ship it to Gaza. And in order to ship it, you need to ship it through Israel. And to ship it through Israel is a whole different story. You need permits, you need people on the border. And it took us around nine months to figure out the way to get it inside. So but have you figured it out? Yes. So last September, we started officially our operation. We provided so far around 1,200, 300 people um, uh, with electricity. Uh, two months ago, we broke even in the company. <laughs> good for you. That's a good first step, right? Yes. You've always got to exactly. get to that point and then move on. And you've employed women, put women in leadership positions. Yep. So there's also a social impact to the yes. way you do business. Why was that so important to you? Because when I started my business, I had no rule model to follow. And it was too hard for me. So I remember one of my mentors telling me, it's very hard for you. So you should make it easier for others. So when we did the business, when they did the block business, I remember going to the factory 10, 11 a.m., 10, 11 p.m. because there was no electricity and working with men, it was crazy. So people was like, look at me really down and carrying blocks in the streets, riding tuk-tuks. I don't know if you know tuk-tuks. I do indeed. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then it was hard, but I knew that, um, you know, it's, it's the process of paving the road for others. So part of what we do is we reinvested part of the profits in small businesses that run by women. Uh, we also did a lot of social events in Gaza, and we spoke in front of hundreds and thousands of people in Gaza telling them that it's possible to happen. And it's just amazing that that will release all of this potential yeah. and talent that might otherwise not yes. find its way. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. Join Mej this evening at uh, Elliott Bay Book Company in Seattle for a discussion presented by Architecture for Refugees USA and Architects Without Borders. We've linked additional information online, including more details about her fascinating work.